Hello everyone, welcome back to Supposedly Fun. I am Greg. It is cold where I am, although uh, we have not gotten the worst of the winter weather that happened in my state. It's actually uh, getting up to almost 50 degrees in where I live today, but uh, it was a really cold weekend. We got some snow, which I'm not ready for. I really love fall. It's my favorite season, so I was very excited for fall. Definitely did not want to skip to winter. The good news about it is that I get to start wearing cardigans, and I love cardigans. I'm an old man like that. I'm also growing in my beard for Halloween, so that's exciting for me. Don't know how your October has gone so far, but I wanted to do my wrap-up for the month of September and all the things I read. September was a really hard month for me. I just couldn't really get anything going. Work was really busy. Um, you know, foster parent life was insane. So, you know, there's just a lot going on, and with that I could not get much of anything going this month. And I managed to just barely, at the end of the month, make it to seven books, which put, makes this month on par with every other month of the year so far. But I really had to stretch to get there. And I, part of why I did that is I just went to kind of like escapist things. So let's talk first about um, what my TBR from for September had been and uh, the devastation that happened there. So I did not get a, pretty much any of the library books that I had been expecting to get in the month of September. The only one that showed up was Out of Darkness Shining Light by Patina Kappa, which I have not started yet. So like Duck's Newbury Report has said that it's on its way to me for about a week. So I'm beginning to question my library on that. Um, uh, there was, actually, that's not true. There was one other library book that did come, and that's They Called This Enemy by George Takei, which I'll get to because I did read that one. Uh, I canceled my hold on Night Boat, The Tangier by Kevin Barry because I won a copy on Goodreads, and it showed up. So basically, my September TBR had been His Family by Ernest Poole, which is to launch my Pulitzer Prize project. Didn't read it. Uh, Late in August by William Faulkner, which I'm working on as a buddy read with uh, Doris from Aldi Books. And both of us have kind of failed a life on this uh, because we have not made it very far. I think I'm uh, in chapter eight uh, at the moment. And so I failed to start this in August when the read along from Brian at Focus was actually happening and I failed to finish it in September. So now it's gonna be the light in August in October. So I have to get to this. Uh, I, I've been really enjoying it so far, but that's still kind of a swing and a miss on my September TBR. And this, uh, I did not even start Girl, Woman, Other. Um, we talked about the library holds already. Oh God, I had some audiobooks that came in and because, I don't know if it's because work was busy or my mind was on other things, um, I couldn't pay attention to them. So I got Rules of Civility by Amar Tools, Half of a Yellow Sun by Chima Mende Ngozi Adichie, and On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. And I, I didn't even get to Half of a Yellow Sun before it was due back. So that I didn't even start that one. Rules of Civility, I made it about an hour into, so I'm not even gonna count it for this month. And then I had to, it had to go back to the library. Uh, and I was enjoying it, but I just didn't get very far. And the same thing with On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. I made it roughly an hour into the book and wasn't progressing any further because my problem was every time I was listening, I couldn't pay attention. And I don't think it's fair to miss large portions of a, of a book. So I kept rewinding and rewinding and going back and listening to the same parts over and over again, which is really soul crushing. So finally I just gave up. So this is why I don't really do TBRs very often because, you know, life happens and uh, I'm not very good at sticking to TBRs. I may do one for October. I don't know yet. Uh, and if I do, I'll, I have to consider, because I know Victober is going on and there's comment with the book, and I would like to try to get some things in for those. I don't think I'm going to do a whole reading list just for those. Um, but I got to think about that. I may do an October TBR and see how it, that one goes. But that's to be determined. So basically, let's go in order. The first book I finished in the month of September was They Call This Enemy by George Takei. This is a graphic memoir. I've talked about it already. It is very good. I would recommend this. It's very interesting. He talks about his time as a child in a Japanese internment camp during World War II here in America and how as a child he thought it was normal and how he continues to process that situation of what happened to him and his family as he grows up and his relationship with his parents and how he eventually gets mad at them because he didn't feel they did enough but then he gets older and starts to consider how he would have reacted in the same situation and it's just it's a very interesting book i absolutely recommend that 
The second book I finished in the month of September was unfortunately The Chestnut Man, which I said you were never going to see in one of my videos again because when I did my book haul for September, I said that I was going to be getting rid of it, but I did not make it to my used bookstore in town to see if I could trade it in. So here it is again. It's an awful book. Uh, I had gotten it from Book of the Month. Cardboard characters. Um, ridiculous plot twists. I really think the treatment of the female detective is pretty darn gross. The treatment of women in general in the book is pretty darn gross. And I just did not like it at all. So that's that one. The next book I read was actually I listened to the audio of My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante, but I have the physical book, so I'm going to hold it up, and unfortunately the glare from the window is kind of making it difficult to see the cover. So this is the first book in, is it four books? Or three. I think it's four. But so it follows the friendship of Elena and Lila. They are born in Italy roughly around 1950. Yeah, it begins in the 1950s and they're already kids. So they're born somewhere in the late 1940s or early 1950s. Here's the negative part of this book. It's very slow moving. Not much happens outside of the details of these girls' lives as they come of age and grow up. So, I can see where somebody might get bored or say that this book is really boring. However, I think a lot of it is really smartly observed. It's got a lot of really sharp social commentary buried in there. You could read this book and completely ignore that, or you could read this book and really enjoy that. I really enjoyed that. So to me, it's worth all the time and all the minutia. Because what, the, what Elena Ferrante, the author, is doing, by the way, this was translated by... Bear with me one second. Anne Goldstein. And I think Anne Goldstein did a really good job translating. I think she did a really good job making, keeping the book engaging and keeping everything going. So, basically, what's particularly interesting is that being set in the early 1950s to mid-1950s, I think it may even get into the 60s by the end because they become teenagers. It's really interesting because... World War II is not far off. These characters were not alive when World War II happened, obviously, but their parents were. So in a lot of ways, they are trying to figure out what happened, where their parents stood politically, and in some cases, deal with their parents' demons and reconcile what their parents did in World War II when Mussolini was in power. And that's really interesting. What else is interesting is that Italy still to this day has a very complicated relationship with women. There, you know, uh, It's a very masculine society women are ogled and catcalled in the street a lot and stuff like that happens and you see how it impacts the characters and i think that's really interesting and again a lot of this is really subtle it's going on under the surface but it's, to me it's very interesting and the ways these characters deal with the idea of growing up and what society expects of them and their role as women in the society and that is particularly interesting because the two characters elena and leela end up on their their best friends but they end up on very different paths in life. Um, I think it's Leela is um, the very she's very smart, she's very determined, self-activating, and Elena is a little more passive. But Leela ends up having to drop out of school and work at her father's shoe store and ends up on a very different path from Elena. And part of Elena's journey is trying to reconcile how she is getting opportunities that she feels Leela should have, but Leela doesn't have, because uh, going to school takes money at this point. What's interesting to me as well is that my mother's family immigrated from Italy. <sighs> my grandmother was already here. Uh, my grandmother immigrated when she was about three or four years old, so she, it, it, they immigrated when she was in, in some time, at some point in the 1930s. And my grandfather immigrated in his 20s. They came from a small town that spoke a dialect. And what's interesting in this book is that their dialect does not does not really exist anymore. Uh, when relatives would from Italy would come to visit, there'd even be a language barrier between them because they still spoke the dialect, but the family back in Italy had started to speak regular Italian. And this book kind of deals with that because a lot, a lot of the characters speak dialect, but then as they become educated, they start to speak Italian, and they can switch back and forth. And if you don't know Italian and you only speak dialect, you're seen as lower class and uneducated. And that was really interesting for me because it just reflects... I, I mean, I don't speak the dialect that my parents... I, I, the only words I learned in the dialect were the words I was not supposed to learn, so I could curse in dialect Italian. But that's about it. So it was just... That part was really interesting for me as well. I think this is definitely a book that we're, a series that I'm going to be invested in and continue, in continuing to read 
Can't wait to get to those. I have a hold on the next book in the series on Libby, my library app for the audio, and can't wait to continue that. The next book uh, is actually a DNF, and I had started this either at the beginning of September or even at the beginning of August. This is Christodora by Tim Murphy. It is, a, it is a good book. I can't read it right now. And that's me, not the book. It's a very good book. It seemed like a book that I would really enjoy, and I mentioned this briefly, that I was considering whether or not I was going to DNF it or try to continue. Uh, this book is due at the back at the library this weekend, and I decided I'm just gonna return it. So the thing is, what's blocking it for me is that uh, two of the characters have adopted a son who I believe was about five years old when they did, and when he finds out about his past, he starts detaching from them. I'm a foster parent. We've had a lot of issues over the summer, you know, not to get into the situation where, Foster children have a reaction to things where they think, I need to reject you before you reject me. So it's hard for me to read a book about a kid who's adopted who wants to reject his parents. So that's on me. It's not on the book. It's a good book. I recommend it. I would, once I'm not in the emotional position I am right now with that issue, um, I would go back to read this. It's just not for me right now. So, is what it is. Uh, the next one is, oh gosh, I don't have it in front of me. Bear with me one second. Okay, I'm back. So uh, that's about where I was when I started really hitting my reading rut and not having it, making any progress. And I talked to Doris about our buddy read like in August and we kind of agreed to take a weekend off. And I turned to, Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe. This is a graphic memoir about, so Maya Kobabe identifies as gender non-binary and uses the pronouns E, M, air. And that is new for me. I, so if I, if I start making mistakes, please bear with me and I apologize. So Maya Kobabe was assigned female at birth. And this graphic memoir is about air journey of self-discovery and coming of age, trying to figure out where they are on the spectrum of gender. And a lot of it is about learning to use def discovery and finding def definitions out there because there isn't a lot of information traditionally, there is a lot more now, but it, it's just about trying to find where you are, who you are, and being comfortable with that. And it's, it's a really good book. I definitely would recommend this. It is really well illustrated. Um, I will say, Maya Kobabe is in a very particular position on these issues because her family is kind of, they're kind of hippies. Her parents are, air parents, air parents are kind of hippies to begin with. And I, I got flustered by my gender pronoun mistake. So uh, air parents are kind of hippies to begin with. So they're more inclined to be supportive. Uh, he has a very supportive sister who's, so it's not the typical environment somebody in this position would be in, but it's really good to read and it's really interesting and it really just makes you hope that everybody going on such a wild journey to discover who they are and accept themselves. Uh, you really wish everybody would have that same situation where people will love them no matter what. So absolutely, I would recommend this one. So that's the first book that I turned to to get myself out of my reading rut. The second is that I listened to an audiobook and actually managed to get the way all the way through it. Uh, it was The Assassination of Margaret Thatcher by Hilary Mantel. And part of why I managed to get through this one is that the audiobook is only roughly four hours. And it's short stories. So I kind of did it in installments with each story. It's a good enough book. Hilary Mantel is a great writer. I love her writing. I think part of my problem with it is that it really relies on the political situation in England or the UK during Margaret Thatcher's reign or after Margaret Thatcher's reign. And I say reign as if she, as if she was royalty uh, during her tenure as prime minister. And I am not super up on uh, the political situation there. Uh, the best I have done is watch the movie Iron Lady, which uh, Ali at Booktry informed me is a really, really watered down <laughs> depiction of Margaret Thatcher. So it kind of, I feel like a lot of this book depends on knowledge that I don't have. And also, I just didn't really think it was memorable. Honestly, I remember the title story. I finished this book maybe three days ago. I remember the title story and that's about it. 
So if it's fading from my memory this much already, that's probably not a good sign for how things will go for the rest of the year. I'm glad I read it. I love Hilary Mantel's writing. But yeah, not meh. Let's say that. And the final book I used to get myself out of my reading rut is an ebook. It is actually a gay romance novel called By the Currawangs. By the, oh God, I'm gonna, if there are any Australian people out there, please help me with the pronunciation maybe. It's By the Currawangs Call by Wilton B. Marsland. So, you know, I actually kind of waffled back and forth. Like, should I talk about this? Should I not talk about this? But you know what? I said goodbye to my dignity a long time ago. And you know what? Roman romance is a genre. It exists. It's valid. It, to, to not talk about it would imply guilt around the topic. So, it is what it is. I read a gay, gay romance novel. So what? Uh, so this is set in 1892 in Australia. There is a priest who uh, is sent to Dinbroughton, which is a very small town. And he is settling in and he meets the... Uh, local police sergeant and uh, they slowly fall in love. What's interesting about this is that you know typical romantic comedies or romances part of why I really don't like the genre is that I say don't like the genre uh, clearly I, I, I don't mind it that much I read one. Part of why I, I don't engage with the genre too much is that it's very set in a formula and there are a lot of cliches. So usually the couple meets, they get together, things are great, then something separates them or causes an argument. It's usually a misunderstanding and then they come back together in the end. In this book, it doesn't follow that format. In this book, the problem they face is that it's 1892 and they're gay men in Australia where being gay men is illegal. So basically the struggle in this book is them trying to find a way to be together if they can be together and whether or not they want to take that risk to be together. And that, to me, is really interesting. So, I enjoyed this book. You know, who cares? So those are the books that I read in the month of September. In terms of reading goals, let me get back to my Goodreads list. So my reading goals for the year are to read more books by women than by men. I believe this is the first month I've read more books by men than by women. Let's double check. So, George Takei, Soren Zweistrup, Tim Murphy, uh, that's three men, uh, Elena Ferrante, Hilary Mantel, and Wilton Marsland. So it's three and three. Uh, and then, of course, Maya Kobabe is, no is non-binary, so there is no tiebreaker. So it's actually even. I did not read more than one or more than the other. So. Basically, for the year, I was way ahead with reading more women than men, so I'm doing all right with that one. And another goal for the year was to read more books uh, by or about people from the LGBTQ spectrum that are not G, so lesbian, bisexual, or transgender characters. So George Takei is gay, but that doesn't count. Uh, Wilton B. Marsland is, I, be I believe, is que is queer. Pretty sure. So there, I'm going to count that, even though it's about gay men. <laughs> Um, and of course there's Maya Kobabe. So there you go, I got two more books in terms of that. I'm in the process of developing my reading plan for October. Obviously I'm going to, it's going to feature late in August because I really want to finish this. I was enjoying it in the beginning. And by the way, uh, I will link Brian at Bookish's channel down below. He has done, and, and I'm blanking on the, per the other person who hosted the read along, I'm sorry. But I'll link Brian's profile down below. Uh, his videos for the first, the parts of the book I have read have been very helpful and insightful, and that has been wonderful. So I am going to think about what I'm gonna read next. Uh, I'm talking about a buddy read for uh, Kimberly Parsons' Blacklight. And so I might in, in do that. I might try to read some scary books. I might try to include some Victober books, some Gone with the Book. Uh, so I don't know yet. I'll think about that and I will get back to you about what my reading plans for the month of October are if I'm going to even do a TBR because I traditionally don't. So we shall see. Anyway, if you've read any of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have recommendations, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. I'd love to hear what you've been reading in the month of September, what you've liked, what you didn't like. And until next time, thank you for your time and I will be back. Until then, happy reading.